So I'm curious, did Arrera have any wizardly training at all back when she was still in Fey? Because it seems like not a lot of people know about her gift, and I'm curious if that was a thing that people were aware of earlier in her life, or if she might have left Fey before people really kind of had the opportunity to, to provide her that training. Bingo. The latter. And here's the thing. The Red Wizards test every kid to see if they have the gift. Like, there's no sneaking around within the society of Thay able to work magic but not being detected by the Red Wizards. However, because Herrera had a wild talent, like she's a sorceress, but it didn't develop until later, she got tested as a kid. No gift. Therefore, ah, she could be anything. We don't care. Because, see, the Red Wizards are most interested in making sure that everybody who can hurl arcane magic, who is Thayan, and living in Say is under their thumb. They don't want any competitors living inside the country. That's how come the testing. And they tested Herrera when she was young, and no talent. And she realized what was going on, and she was making darn sure that she was far away from Say as a traveling merchant trading when she did any experimentation, got any trading whatsoever, which was basically just like, okay, let me try experimenting on my own when I'm away from everybody, no witnesses, and I have a few magic items that I've purchased, like little stuff, a drift glow, you know, for the for making light, the equivalent of a um, curved shield spell that you can use as an umbrella, you know, in a rainstorm, you curve it around yourself, and it's just a, um, an invisible, except it isn't invisible when rain is, or for that matter, guano, is splashing all over it, but I mean it. It it is a otherwise invisible little dome, curved shield of force, stuff like that. She had little magic items, quals, feather tokens, or just feather tokens, as they are in the current edition of the game. She had stuff like that she bought, so that was her cover. Whenever she used a tiny bit of magic and it worked, she could blame it on a magic item or pass it off as her using a magic item. And you know that's as simple as saying. Oh, well, that's that's that item gone. Damn it, I'll have to buy another one. God, that's going to cost. Or something like that. And somebody over here is just saying, oh, that's going to cost replacing that. You know, you don't actually have to say, I just burned a magic item. You say, oh, replacing that's going to cost. You know. Anyway, but yeah, that's, she never got tested. So the Red Wizards don't know. Unless or until one of them sees her do it now. You know. Was that her primary motivation for leaving Thay? self-preservation or was it more oriented toward i guess her political differences with the way things were happening in Faye? oh neither she was like she lives to trade this is what she's good at this is the, the, she's a wheeler dealer and she was being sent out because she was good at wheeling and dealing bartering and so on and various people who you know senior merchants established merchants in Thay, sent her out as a traveling envoy because they were older it's sort of like when you don't want to travel anymore because your back hurts, your feet hurts, you don't like going to strange places where they talk funny languages and do things differently, and you might get robbed or it might be dangerous. Oh, I've got this young thing who will go for me. And she's, okay, Arrera is not a beauty, but there are things that you might barter and sell as a younger woman as opposed to an older man because they look at the older man and go, this guy knows what he's doing, so I won't even negotiate with him. Oh, this young woman, I might be able to take her. I mean, I'm in in a business deal, so let's start talking. And, and then, of course, you know, and she loves wheeling and dealing, so she was perfectly happy to travel outside Thay. And that is the life she wants. And, of course, once she's outside of Thay and she gets to see how the other half lives elsewhere in the realms, oh, there are places in the, in the realms that don't take slave, don't have undead everywhere, don't have these red wizards ruling everything? Oh, I sort of prefer that. Once she's outside Thay, she doesn't want to go back because she sees everywhere else is better. And she also sees, now that I work magic, now that I'm successful, I don't want to go back to a place where I might get oppressed, enslaved, mistreated personally, you know, because I'm successful. Why would I do that? And then, of course, as she takes her measure of how Thay is loathed and how Thayans are hated by everybody else, and how they fear Zastam, and they 
fear the Zulkirs and these marching undead armies. And then she hears all the rumors, which may be exaggerated, but she's pretty sure have a kernel of truth behind them, of all these things, the Zastam crazy plans for world domination that he keeps trying. She doesn't want to be around for that at Ground Zero. No, thank you very much. She likes it better outside, say. So that's why she's, you know. That's interesting. I, I feel like the trope is usually, at least in like the character development trope, it's like, yeah, I was from this corrupt, horrible region with an evil, oppressive government, and then I escaped and started my adventure. But it's interesting that she, because she didn't know any different, started and say, saw the wider world, and then came to the conclusion of that after her exposure to, to different ways of life. So I think that that's an interesting kind of way to, to turn it on its head. Um, and it speaks to her not wanting to be involved with Thay, right? Her, her, her not necessarily disloyalty, but not her fervent loyalty to Thay. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, she can see places like Alm, okay, or Waterdeep, where, hey, you're a successful merchant, you can practically be noble. You can live like a king. But if you're back in Thay, merchants are firmly under the feet of any red wizard. And the Zulkirs and the rulers in particular, I mean, merchants are, yeah, yeah, you're useful, but you're useful nobodies. Whereas, you know, outside say, hey, I can retire rich, which is indeed what she's trying to do. I'll, I'll accumulate all these properties and I'll, and you know, when I get to be old and don't feel like traveling and wheeling and dealing, I'll find me a rich husband to, just to pay for things, you know, sort of thing. And I'll sell off my properties and I'll be really rich. Or I'll keep some of them. You never know. Uh, and I'll keep my hand in in the game uh, as a trader. It's it's all about, hey, outside, say, I can be a somebody. Back and say, I'm always down here on the totem pole and I will stay down here. Yeah. And you said that she doesn't, anger particularly quickly, which I think is admirable and, and wise. Uh, but I am curious if she becomes at all protective of her trade and, you know, especially maybe her client list. And if anything that kind of goes on with that might lead to an interesting adventure path, for instance, for, for, Oh no, no, no. But, it, but it's not, uh, there it could lead to a very interesting adventure path, but not because she's protective. That's why I said she always takes the long view. If somebody is trying to pry clients away from her or learn her client list sort of thing, why? What are they up to? Let's watch. Let's play along with them. Maybe I can turn this into something because the whole point of long view as opposed to short view, the short view is I have to win every argument. I have to win every deal. But she's the other sort. Hey, I may throw this deal. I may make sure this guy or gal thinks they got the better of me. And then I'll see what they do with that. Are they going to treat me like a dupe from now on? What are they going to do? I'll watch, because maybe I can fox them into something or use them to lead me to something else or find out who their network is. You know, because that's the whole thing about taking a long view. She doesn't mind losing some because she's won so many, she now owns the string of properties. So she feels secure. She doesn't feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm down to my last copper piece. I've got to win this deal. No, I can lose deals. Let's see what these other people do. Let's see what they're really like. You see, that's the whole delight of somebody who is slow to anger, but knows she's slower than other people, so she figures she can goad some people, and who takes the long view. That makes her way more interesting as a kingpin or a supportive non-player character in the DM's toolbox. Because she can be playing all sorts of games uh, that are far more subtle and far more layered than the old, hey, I'll hire the player characters and dupe them into something to frame them for something. Because that's the act of somebody who's got to win every deal. She's doing the other thing. Hey, I want to part on good terms with these guys because they could be useful five years from now when I come this way again. So I am wondering how much Arrera knows about contemporary Thay. She's been away from home for quite some time. And say, for instance, an adventuring party wanted to learn more about Thay or get intel on Thay. Is that something that Arrera stays connected to, or is she a little bit out of the loop? She's a little bit out of the loop on current Red Wizard internal politics, like who's on the ups and who's on the downs. She's very much out of the loop like any Thayan would be on what goes on on Thaymount, you know, in that the central, you know, but in terms of Thayan culture and merchants, particularly in the Nethjet area, 
which is one of the ports where merchants pay as little lip service to the rulership of Thay as they can get away with because they're all about trading with the wider world, she can be very useful and she's up to date because one of the things that doesn't change very quickly is Thayan fashion, culture, attitudes, and it's all in that Thay, Land of the Red Wizards book that I did with Alex Cammer and Alan Patrick. I, I touched on all this stuff. What is changing under Zastam's rule is the fact that slaves are few and far between and are almost owning one is almost a status symbol now. And they're very expensive because Zastam for the first time introduced the concept of, hey, just have tons and tons of undead. You don't have to treat them well. You don't have to feed them to keep them alive. And you can work them. Well, you can't work them to death because they're already dead. So you can work them. So you, therefore, a slave becomes a luxury. And that's what's happening. So then you see, Thea nobles still own slaves as a status symbol. I have three slaves. Ah, but your middle class Thean shopkeeper, they actually hire people like the kids, the street youths. You see, a slave, you have certain responsibilities. You have to feed them. And if you mistreat them and people catch you at it, this is a slaving culture. So it's like you are regarded as irresponsible, sloppy, a slob, you know. Whereas if it's somebody you just hired, well, that's different. You're not responsible for them. You are responsible for your slaves. Zastam is changing that and moving towards the more and more undead. So that is a change in the culture. But Arera is aware of that from the gossip and chatter of all the Thayan merchants. So she's well aware of it, but she hasn't seen it up close on the ground. But she's a perfect, you know, like she can give the player characters maps of Thay. She can tell them where to go to. She talks to merchants enough that she knows, oh, don't go to that tavern. It burned down. Or, oh, it's not as good as it used to be, but this inn is on. The oh, and there's a new inn. I've never been there, but, you know, it's well spoken of. So if you read that Thay Land of the Red Wizards book I did, there is a, a tour of Thay that is sort of like a Volos tour that's in it. The, there's a female merchant on the cover of that book pointing on to a map. She is the one giving the tour. Well, Arera talks to that woman. So anything that woman can tell you in the tour about here's where I go for, you know, here's where I stay, here's where I eat, here are the interesting shops. Arera knows that too. She just doesn't know it by personally visiting them. Yeah, I, I think that that's a really interesting aspect of her knowledge about they, mostly because, I mean, we as players see that facet of Thayan culture, the slavery, the slaving culture as being so vile that I think that our first inclination is, of course, to want to pursue, you know, the liberation of the enslaved in Thay. And I know that that's led to a million really great adventure paths for a lot of really mm -hmm. motivated gamers. But the fact that the information of how Zastam is outmoding living slaves to undead slaves not being super widely distributed, that's like a whole nother adventure path, just gathering mm -hmm. intel and planning out how you plan to you know, liberate the enslaved peoples of Thay. So it's, it's kind of curious to think about you know, how to source that information because somebody as prominent you know, as a Thayan, as a Rara, wouldn't even know that. You'd have to dig pretty deep to get that information. Could you think of any really interesting, I guess off the top of your head, adventure paths that a Rara might be able to provide to players or adventure hooks, a uh, mission they might, she might be able to send them on, or perhaps uh, something that might incite a Rara into uh, some kind of hostility or uh, antagonism for the party? If the player characters are outside, say, and intend to remain so, so this is happening distant from Thay, then what Arrera would probably be trying to do is conceal her own involvement in something, particularly if she thinks Red Wizards or other Thayan merchants would see her involvement if she was physically there. She may use them as her message runners or go-betweens, so they're carrying the trade goods for the barter rather than her. Okay, so she becomes a prime mover, a king in, in the back room, so to speak sending other people to do her, quote, dirty work for her. But in this case, it's not illicit work. It's trading deals and carrying the goods. And of course, if the goods are valuable, they could well be attacked by others because, hey, Herrera is not on the scene. These are a bunch of adventurers. Good. Let's attack. 
Now, if, if you want, to, as the dungeon master, to take the players into Thay, well, that's dead easy. Herrera has something that along her chain of bartering. She has ended up with some goods that will be far more valuable when sold inside Thay and not on the coast, but in an interior tharch rather than Neschet and so on. She's, they're going to fetch a much higher price if sold inside Thay to a particular set of buyers or type of buyer or even a particular individual and she doesn't want to go into say so she uses the player characters to make that last leg of the trek to get the goods to where they can be sold and you know she might have a banker in effect a money lender an agent who owes her something whom the player characters can remit the money to or work through but she to herself doesn't want to step into Thay so take these goods into Thay for me. So yeah, that's the logical thing she would use that for. Or what if a red wizard has seen Arara or she thinks they've seen Arara do something and she doesn't want that reported to the wider red wizards. Okay, you got to get to that red wizard as they travel through Thay to where their superiors are to make the report. And you've got to off them somewhere, somehow, and make it look like an accident or get the heck away after you've done it because the entire country will be after you. Because, you know, a foreigner, an outlander, killed a red wizard. Well, they must be made an example of because, you know, you strike at the red wizards, they don't want slaves, middle-class merchants and so on thinking, hey, red wizard can be taken down that easily. It's time to settle some scores. They want to make an example of anybody who dares to lift a hand against a red wizard. So, you know, that could be a, you have to take that red wizard down and you have to obliterate them, make it look like an accident, something of that, some sort of subterfuge like that to cover the fact that a red wizard was murdered. Thank you so much, Ed. That was great. Arara sounds really interesting. I am incredibly interested in hearing if uh, any of our viewers end up using Arara in their games. If so, definitely leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, until next time. If you're enjoying this video, please like it, leave me a like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I've got a new video, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms Lore, please go to Patreon. Join my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. I'd love it. Your support makes these videos possible.